everyone. Welcome back to my solo wargaming project. This is Rome in the Iberian Peninsula. At this point in time, they're engaged with the Laetani tribe. The Laetani tribe is a tribe in the kind of the northeast as it comes out of the Pyrenees Mountains. Um, they're trying to uh, stop the Romans from advancing up the uh, Iberian Peninsula towards the Pyrenees to uh, open up the uh, mountain passes and what they've decided to do is ambush and so we have put together an ambush scenario and this is like turn four so you can check out the other turns previously on the other videos and so let's go ahead and just get right into this all right iberian orders phase obviously we're using hail caesar rules specifically hail caesar 2 uh, working through those um, having a good time doing it so uh, kind of a recap, there's uh, forage markers, which is or based off of uh, <clears throat> Warlord games, like their barnyard animals. I put them on bases, I attach them to a unit and that counts as their foraging counter. And the whole idea is for the Romans to hold on to them and for the Iberians to take them away. All right, in turn four, the Iberian Order's phase is to charge. Uh, if you do a little quick review, this cohort here had blundered in turn three, had turned about, went two moves towards this light infantry unit, not realizing that this uh, cavalry unit had uh, recovered from its disordered disorder in last turn and was able to return to the battle this turn. So whatever storyline you would want to create for this, whether he was the uh, leader of this cohort, whether it was a legate or a local centurion, misunderstood the, the orders, uh, was looking for fame and glory, uh, whatever, it's not going to turn out well. <laughs> Okay, here's another charge at the top left of the screen. You can see the little red arrow pointing towards the the, the unit in blue on the Roman side with the uh, forage marker. Uh, that unit is going to charge the unit below them to the uh, below the unit with the red little arrow. Uh, that unit is disordered, so it cannot charge, but it will be able to shoot at a significant disadvantage. Iberian shooting phase. Apparently the disadvantage wasn't enough. They were able to shoot. And obviously you can see from the markers that that unit is going to flee because I rolled double sixes. And <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they rolled really poorly. And so they're going to flee, which basically means they're going to lose their two forage markers. All right. Yeah, you can see them. They they fled back through the ford, trying to cross the river to get away from all that pesky shooting from the Iberians. And they ran through the Roman cohort, which the Roman cohort don't care because they're open order infantry and, you know, they're Romans. And you can see here in the middle part of the screen, the piglet markers, and they are now free and the Romans have lost control of some supplies. Here's a close-up of that unit fleeing in terror across the ford. Here's a top-down view of the battlefield after the shooting phase and before the chargers are moved. Combat phase. Kind of a close-up. This is that uh, Iberian Light Infantry unit. That at, When we first started the, this game, I really didn't think that they were ever even going to get into combat. But the Romans have obliged, turned around, charged towards them, and now they're going to find themselves in a world of hurt. Okay, here's the cavalry unit uh, recovered from their disorder last turn and charging into the flank of the Roman cohort. Here you can see behind the Roman cohort and the action taking place. Yeah, this didn't turn out good for the Romans. They took a tremendous amount of damage. Uh, hardly any saves were made. Uh, they actually, uh, they started off uh, with uh, five on their stamina and they took a total of like seven. So that's 12. That's double their stamina. So we all know what's coming up next. Here's kind of a, a bigger view of the battlefield. You can see the fleeing units and the combats being taken place. 
and the ninth cohort is destroyed. Terrible, terrible. It just, if that blunder hadn't happened, this whole game would have, it, it all hinged on this, this one moment when they blundered and then rolling on the chart for them to do the very thing that the Iberians actually really needed them to do to turn this game around. That's why we roll the dice. That's why we roll dice. Okay, here's this other combat going on. Light infantry open order against light infantry open order. And it's going to be a slugfest here. Yeah, some more close-ups of that. Here's another close-up of it. Yeah, I, don't, I like taking a lot of close-up pictures of the stuff on the table. Here we go. You see the black arrow there that indicates that they've lost their combat and they're going to flee. Which again means they're going to lose control of their forage marker. Okay, now at the top of the screen you can see where that uh, Roman light infantry unit is gone. They fled through the Roman cohort. Now this uh, Iberian light infantry, they are not going to run headlong into that formed up infantry unit. And so they're just going to stay put. And down here we have the light infantry fighting the out Roman allied archers. And they uh, light infantry uh, won the combat fairly easily. But, but the archers rolled really high on the break test table and they fell back in good order. And you can see now that it's almost like they have fallen back and they have created almost like a battle line. But since all the, the uh, forage markers have been lost by the Romans, there's really nothing but a loss facing the Iberians if they continue the struggle. Here we can see more of the, from behind the, that Roman uh, cohort uh, that hasn't been engaged yet at all. Um, it is the most powerful unit on the table right now. So um, trying to get through them and to the units that are fleeing across the ford would be suicidal at best. So we're just going to uh, probably just let them go. Here's another view of those units crossing the, uh, the ford and trying to get away from the Iberians. And that brings us to the end of the Iberian turn four and this game. I hope everybody's enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun going through it and playing through this one. So let's take a little look at the aftermath of this game. Um, as I said before, this was an ambush scenario. I placed seven forage markers with different units on the table. Now normally and historically, this is, this is what happened. You would have an escort of probably a cohort or depending on how large of a foraging units they were, they could be a, even an ad hoc uh, formation of legionnaires, cavalry and such to help protect the foragers. But the foragers would have been mainly just guys that have put down their heavy armor, grabbed a, a light shield, maybe a few javelins and so they can actually load wagons, carry supplies, herd animals do whatever they needed to do to get the supplies back to the camp. So most of the supply markers were placed with the non-combat units, the, the light infantry, the skirmishers, and that sort of thing. And so in the ambush scenario, the Iberians need to take or deprive, they don't even have to take possession, they just have to make the Romans give them up, and which they did in this scenario. There were seven on the table. The Romans lost all seven. Wow. So how am I going to use this in the next game? The next game is going to be a, a large battle game. So for each lost um, forage marker, one unit is going to lose one point of stamina. So I have 10 cohorts in my legion. Seven of them are going to be uh, at negative one stamina at the start of the game. That's a tremendous disadvantage. Um, and the ninth cohort, since it was destroyed, I will bring it back as a levy 
cohort or you know uh, recruit or the lowest level i'll have to look i forget which one it is um we're going to be bringing them back as the lowest level cohort because they're brand spanking new they've j they've been able to replace them but and i'm and i'm definitely going to make them one that's going to suffer that negative one to their uh stamina just because you know can't trust those newbies and then on the iberian side if you check out some of the other videos when i was rolling for aid in this campaign the iberians are going to receive a total of seven different units now how we choose to show that on the table i'm not quite sure yet there's two different ways one you can recycle destroyed units and place them in an ad hoc division or if you've got the models you can place them as an ad hoc separate division on the table and allow them to function independently of the Iberian general. Um, I'll have to see because the next game is going to be a fairly large game and so I'm not going to uh, get into it right now what all the things I'm going to do because I'm going to be taking a break. I got to I got to get some more allied troops painted up for my uh, Romans anyway and i need to take some time and think about how i want to do the the battlefield and set up the table and stuff so the game makes sense and i don't rush into it and make a lot of mistakes and you know i'd rather i'd rather take my time and do it right especially a, a big battle that's coming up next all right i uh, hope you guys enjoyed this i enjoy doing them um, if you'd like leave a comment down below Give me a like, give me a share, subscribe if you haven't. Everybody stay safe, stay well. And like I said, I'll probably see you next month with the big battle. Um, and uh, we'll see how it all turns out. And then we're going to continue on with Rome in Iberia. Guys, stay safe, stay well.